So in about 1982, when I was about 21 years old, I was working in the doll shop. And I look back on that, I'm so thankful for the time that I spent because I learned to, uh, to paint the heads. I, I worked in the, the painting department, and then I was moved to the, uh, the finishing department. They kind of moved me around where they needed help. Uh, I worked in finishing, so I worked with gluing and, and all the, the details that go into putting the finished doll together. And around that time, my parents asked me if I would work on some displays for them. That was always a difficult aspect of the Simpich doll business was to work out uh, someone to actually display the dolls. My parents tried to do it at home. I loved what they did, but it often was neglected. And then when they moved into their building here in uh, 1978, uh, the same thing was happening. The, uh, the window displays and the, the, front, the front room displays were kind of uh, kind of put on the back burner because they were everyone was working so hard to create the the characters so they asked me if I would start to work on displays for them and I was so excited about that yeah, my heart had always been in in display and in displaying the characters and so they kind of just let me go for it and I was really into uh, paper mache in the early 1980s and I I created this enormous paper mache kind of driftwood tree. It took me you know, several weeks to, to, uh, to sculpt it with uh, the glue and paper towels and we hung the cloud babies and angels from it. Uh, it was a little cumbersome but it, it was a great uh, introductory project for display for me. And then I decided I would try to design some dioramas. And this here was the very first diorama that I designed in about 1982 and uh, they had recently done a Hansel and Gretel and Witch set of dolls. Now here in the display we have um, a really old set uh, that they designed in the 1950s. Just absolute treasures and they didn't make very many. And uh, uh, in, in the late 70s they began to consider redoing a new Hansel and Gretel and Witch set. And so this diorama was actually designed for them. So here we have the witch, and uh, she was actually, uh, when, I, when I was laying this out, I, I carefully figured out a way that they could, uh, could stand inside. Uh, I had a lot to learn, and I wanted the stands to kind of sink down and, and be concealed. So I worked out a place for the witch, I worked out a place for Gretel here, and uh, here's Hansel. And they all were, were worked out with my dad's brand new gingerbread house. And he had designed this out of, well, I believe it was a wax. And they, they worked out a casting um, uh, process that would allow them to, to make the, uh, the gingerbread house over and over. And now that I'm thinking about this, the gingerbread house is what went here. It actually filled that whole space. And I actually had Hansel and Gretel and the witch on this level. Now I remember. It's been a long time. And so this filled, filled up there. They were down here. Uh, they sank down into the floor, and that was used in the doll shop for a number of years. Uh, it was on wheels, they, they could move it around, it had glass, and uh, I, I worked out special lighting for it, and uh, did one other diorama of the uh, nativity, and I think that has been sold. So if anyone out there ever uh, has information on what happened to that uh, nativity diorama, I would like to, you know, talk with someone who maybe has that. I painted a diorama of, the, of Bethlehem and worked out a place for Mary and Joseph and, uh, and the baby Jesus and I think just the donkey. That was just the core set then. Uh, but anyway, uh, we, the doll shop kind of outgrew the, the dioramas uh, and my own style of decorating sort of outgrew that also because I began to realize from years from years and years of experimenting with decorating the dolls that kind of an eclectic uh, for lack of a better word approach is really the most dynamic and I eventually use lots of materials uh, rather than setting them maybe in a specific scene I would use you know uh, you know antiques and and uh, tapestries backdrops uh, props that I would make and bring them all together to display them a little more a little more what you could do in your home 
and, but I had, had to learn that. And, and this case was, uh, was my, my training ground for that. Painstakingly uh, paper mache each of these trees and, and worked out the, uh, the, the background so it would keep going and going. And like I said, the doll shop outgrew it. It ended up in the back of a warehouse and was neglected for many, many years. And uh, then when we opened uh, Simpit Showcase in uh, 2009, we brought it out of storage and I had to refurbish it, uh, repaint it, uh, redo some things up at the top. And for a while, when we first opened Showcase, I had Hansel and Gretel and the Witch displayed. But then we got to thinking this would be a great showcase to display some of the other uh, storybook dolls that my parents designed. Now, now these were mostly the 1950s. That seemed to be the, uh, the time that, that they really uh, um, focused on the, the uh, storybook characters. And so I, I adapted the case so that we could display some of the really classic pieces. Uh, just some of them, just only a handful were made. Here is a very small Alice in Wonderland figure that uh, I think maybe just one or two other ones were made. My mother also designed a larger one, and we still have that in our family collection. Uh, this is my Pinocchio that my parents gave me that was, uh, was one, of, one of the first and only, I think maybe just a handful were designed. And uh, Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh, a wonderful set here. Winnie the Pooh's made out of felt, he has his hand in the honey jar, and they, they were not able to uh, produce this one very much because uh, of copyright issues with that story. So again, just a few were made. And again, Hansel and Gretel and the Witch uh, from the 1950s. A special feature about uh, this particular uh, display of Hansel and Gretel, notice that they're smaller. Uh, smaller proportion than the set my parents did in the, in the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, I was able to use a cookie jar that belonged to my grandmother, Nana Nick. I always looked at this cookie jar in her house and just loved it because I knew it was Hansel and Gretel's house. And uh, when I redid this display, it was great to have a spot for it uh, because we're, we were trying to fit so many dolls here in the case that, uh, that it needed to be smaller than the one my dad designed. So glad, glad to be able to include uh, the special cookie jar. And then over here we have Heidi. And then some years later, uh, in the late 70s, I think it was, they redesigned Heidi again. I don't think there's any other Heidi figure that I know of that's like that, but there may be one or two out there. Uh, what's exciting about these storybook characters is that, that they were designed for the Colorado Springs and Denver schools, and they actually toured the schools. They designed special white wooden boxes and they would, would be um, carefully uh, wedged in the boxes so they wouldn't break and they would go around to classrooms. And when I was in uh, the second grade, I'll never forget it, the white boxes came to our room. I saw them and I didn't know, I didn't know this was going to happen. I was thrilled and very proud when the teacher uh, took out uh, some of these characters and displayed them and would talk about the stories and uh, that was done for, you know, maybe, maybe 10, 15 years that the dolls toured uh, the schools. Uh, but again, not very many made. They weren't made, uh, just, just a few made to sell, but mostly they were commissioned for that project with the schools. So we're so thankful that we have, uh, you know, uh, some of them still in the family. And this is a great way to display them, I think, together. In, uh, in the case. I don't know whether we'll always leave it this way, but, but for a season now, uh, they've been together and it kind of, uh, it shows that, uh, that even this case with its large trees uh, could be kind of a versatile display for them. So uh, if you ever uh, are able to visit our Heritage Center, uh, make sure you, you check out uh, this case. It, it has quite a history and uh, was a real training ground, like I said, for me. To, to learn how to approach displaying my parents' dolls. Uh, it was like when it was in our home, I always made sure the cases were lit. You know, I would go down and if we had customers coming over, I would, would turn on the light and make sure they were beautiful and ready to go, even with all the clutter that was in the room. And then eventually, my parents were so busy, those cases had to be dismantled from using, you know, for display, and they filled them up with doll orders. 
and that always was kind of sad to me. So it's always been sort of, I've, I'm the ambassador, I suppose you could say, of, uh, of displaying the Simpix dolls. So uh, again, thankful that my parents gave me the opportunity to explore uh, materials and they gave me the time to, to try out things to display them and uh, it's always been a labor of love for me. So we hope you'll come um, and uh, visit Simpix Showcase soon and appreciate you for tuning in.